Hello. Hello. similar occasion.
Hello, sir. It's yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me start. Okay. Let me first thank the, the college authorities for inviting me. And uh, this is the topic uh, from a list of topics that I suggested. Uh, and I, I so I, so I realized that this is probably more relevant uh, in today. Uh, what is the buzzword now? Big data analytics. I just want to introduce you what, what, what is actually meant by this picture analytics and uh, what we do there and what are the implications and we'll, what we're actually heading to this subject. Um, so I'll probably start with a couple of examples, um, uh, maybe two, three examples uh, before I set on to the actual motion for this subject. When I was a child, actually I grew up in the same area. Netaji Nagar, very close to the college. In fact, uh, today, the first step in the morning, I was in, in my locality only. I just came back only at about 2 o'clock. So when I was going to a primary school there, uh, that's way back, uh, in Netaji Nagar itself, uh, in class 1 maybe, maybe even class KG, uh, we had a Didi Moni, a lady teacher, who used to teach us um, mathematics, but uh, the starting point was what we call in English a uh, multiplication table or in Tamil called Namta. So he would be say, Do you have to do it? Do you have to charge? So two twos are one, two, are two ones are two, two twos are four, two boxes are six, and so forth. So I didn't understand what I was doing, but we have memorized the table. So there is a multiplication table or in Bangla Namta. All that we memorized without understanding anything is that uh, if I multiply two integers or two digits, um, anything from two to nine, any other number two to nine, if I multiply any two such uh, digits, I know the answer. So, uh, so in the class, after we memorize, the teacher is to ask, oh, so what is so what is four sevens are what? So what I was doing, I was trying to recap from my memory of this 2D two-dimensional multiplication table at the back of my mind uh, or my head. I was trying to retrieve a, a correct number from there. So four sevens are 28. So I could pick up that 28. So I stored this table and I used to you know, receive uh, any mem a number from the table. This is what I learned there. And then when I go to the next class, uh, the same teacher tells, you know, you can multiply two digits. Yes, you multiply two digits. And what is the method? We have put that table all together in our memory. Now, if somebody would ask me that time, what is 27 times 73, I would not know. I have no idea what is 27 times 273 because these numbers are too large for me. At that uh, age of 5 or 6, I couldn't handle multiplication of two numbers 27 and 73. So the teacher taught us a method which I call now algorithm. So, how do you, what is meant by multiplying 27 by 73? So, we should say, okay, you first write down 27, then bottom write down 73. 
Now we start multiplying C by C to 7. So C by 7, I can retrieve from my memory, which is 21. You put one here and put the other two, two in your heart. Okay, carry. In English, carry in Bangladesh, then we multiply C times 2, 6, and add that carry, 8. So I put a 81. Then below, below 1, I put a cross. And then I multiply 27 by 7. So 7 times 7, 49. 9, 4. Then uh, 7 times 2, 14. And 4, so one, 18. So we write on 18. And then we just add the hit by digit. Okay. And that was the result, which is when we're multiplying 27 by 73. So what we did, as a child, I could handle my memory and my retrieval power how to multiply two digits the numbers grow say two digits or three digits the teacher taught us a method or an algorithm by which actually I can multiply any large number any other large number okay so um, if you give me two large numbers which can fit into a, a one single page I can use this method and I can multiply. I can multiply. When I can multiply in, in my class 1 or class 2, if I say 2, 7, 3, 5, 9 times uh, 8, 9, 4, 5, 3, 4, 1, I can multiply because it's going to hold in the page. You know what, what happens with numbers is such that you cannot hold on a, on a single page. Then again, I would fail. So as the numbers grow, our methods change. So then when you come to college, I learned something called an algorithm, multiplying, and I can implement it in a computer. The computer RAM, which is the page where I'm working on, the RAM is pretty uh, large, so I could handle large and long. Now, it might again happen that uh, the RAM, uh, sorry, wrong, not RAM, 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 uh, we're going to RAM, that's the RAM, because we do all the computations at the RAM. Now, if I have to multiply numbers even larger than that, which RAM cannot hold, then what do we do? Then again, we have learned techniques uh, in computer science. Use you know, linear linked lists. Uh, write one large number as a uh, linked list where each of the members in each node is manageable by my RAM. So then we'll just write down another algorithm to multiply two large number, very large numbers are represented by two linear length lists and we can use the capacity or the size of my RAM and we can multiply those two large numbers. So doing that we can now actually multiply it uh, doesn't matter how large the numbers are. So transition from small number to large number, larger number, larger number, larger number, larger number we have developed algorithms. Okay this is in essence what you do in big data analytics. Okay, we start from we have methodologies, we know something for small information, small amount of data. How do we extend this to a huge amount of data? Okay, so before I get into that, I'll probably have one more example. And I don't know if there are some students in my audience, they can try it. Um, again, this is part of uh, uh, a brain teaser. You know, when I was a child, if somebody gave me 10 numbers, just by looking at it, I do something, I don't know what I was doing, but I could put them into an ascending order. Well, some smart people could do that with 20 numbers, some smart people could also do it with 25 numbers, but nobody could do it 200 numbers. Okay, so what you have learned when you come to the college in the first year, we teach people what is called a sorting algorithm. So this means if you have a large number of, you know, a, a huge amount of these numbers, uh, and I can sort it. So we have learned methods like bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, quick sort, merge sort, tree sort, all kinds of sort, if sort. So this sort, this sorting things actually will sort any number of elements. Again, as I told you, my limitation is I'm doing with the computer, the RAM of the computer is my limitation. So I cannot really 
sort the numbers which requires a memory more than the memory of my RAM, which is typically 32 GB or 64 GB. So if I have numbers more than 64 GB, then I will fail. Okay. So we have to evolve another method of how to sort more numbers, which needs more than 64 GB for storing. Okay, so I'll ask you an exercise, small exercise. Suppose on a piece of paper, you can write down five numbers and you can sort them. Okay, but on, a, on, on your page, you cannot get more than five numbers. And then you are given 20 numbers to sort. So what you do, you can pick up any five numbers from the student numbers, do whatever you like on your piece of paper. And then you can send it back to the memory, to the, the external page. You can bring back and forth. But finally, you want those student numbers to be sorted. Okay, I think a student can do it with some, uh, with a little bit of uh, you know, effort and attention. And that's what I would say handling big data. So, uh, big data analytics would be doing analytics. Again, I didn't say what is analytics. Uh, what I told, handling big data. Handling big data needs, uh, I don't say, I, I would not say it needs fundamental uh, uh, shift in paradigm. We'll be using the basic theories, principles, what you do in not so big, huge amount of data. But if we can extend those ideas, those methodologies, but the number, amount of data is huge. This is what is called big data handling. Now it comes to analytics. So what do I do? What is meant by analytics? Okay, so I'll again talk of the story. What I mean by analytics. Uh, so you know, we are, most of us are here Bengalis. So we have a habit of drinking tea. So, uh, I drink tea. You drink tea. In fact, if I go to a, visit a friend's place or a relative's place, they will offer me a cup of tea with a, two biscuits. And you know, this is not a Bengali habit or Indian habit, it's such a British habit. The habit of drinking tea was brought to us by, by British and we were adapted to this habit. So, likewise, if I go to a friend of mine in Britain, if I visit that person, um, the lady of the house will offer me a cup of tea and they don't say biscuits, they say cookies and a few cookies. So here we put two biscuits uh, actually on the dish beside the cup. But there they put the cookies on another plate in, uh, in the middle of the table. So you are offered a cup of tea. Now, till 20 years back, tea was always served with milk and sugar. Now we have a lot of varieties, a lot of fashions, a lot of likings, dislikings. So some people take black tea, someone maybe green tea, someone maybe white tea, someone with sugar, without sugar, with milk without milk, so all kinds of varieties. But, see when 25 years back, we didn't have all this concept, you just go to a house through this simple, usual black tea, okay, prepared with milk and sugar, and it was served. But that is a British style too. So this story goes to uh, um, a conservative father of statistics, Sir Ronald Fisher. So Ronald Fisher was actually teaching in Cambridge. The story is uh, about 100 years old. And that gives you the birth of what I mean by analytics. So he um, visits one of his friend's place. And his friend's wife, the lady of the house, offered him a cup of tea and some cookies. And immediately looking at the cup of tea, a question came into the mind of selfish okay, people have all these queries, that's why they are great. So he told the lady, Madam, uh, you know, my wife cooks tea in two different ways. So let me say what is meant by two different ways. So they will first boil the water and then they will have a pot so where they will put the tea leaf and then they will pour the boiled water. On the tea leaves, and then 
allow to brew it for a few minutes. Sometimes sugar is added while brewing, sometimes it's not added. So after some five ten minutes, they will filter the uh, this uh, water with uh, tea and water, and then if they did not put sugar while brewing, they will add sugar, and they will also add milk. That happens always after the filter. So water is boiled, poured on tea leaves, and it is brewed. Milk is added after filtering. There is only one choice of the sugar. You will put the sugar along with the oil brewing or after filtering. So, um, he asked her, Madam, uh, where, when did you put the sugar? While brewing or after filtering? And Madam said, You know, um, I always put sugar after filtering. And then he asked, any, any particular reason for this? He said, because if you put the sugar while brewing, the tea tastes horrible. Okay. Now comes the analytical mind of Sir Fisher to play. He tells, well, are you sure? Or is it just your belief and conviction? He said, no, I'm absolutely sure. So now comes a scenario where the lady is claiming something. At that tea, when prepared, if sugar is added while brewing, it is horrible. And if the sugar is added after filtering, the tea tastes much better. Now how does one validate this belief? Okay, so he said, okay, now comes the actual analytics here. So how does he validates or she validates uh, her claim or belief? She just maybe that she thinks she can but actually she cannot. Okay, so he says, okay madam, well let me, let me trust you and but let's play a game to validate your belief or your conviction or maybe your truth. Whatever. I don't know what is the truth, but let's play the game and at the end of the game, we come to a conclusion. Okay, and often it happens in everybody's life, every every scenario, every industry, every government, every context, we formulate beliefs and we have, we have supporting data or information which will be used in an analytical way so that we can come to some meaningful conclusion. So this is what is basically analytics. Now, in this case, there is no data. So he has to generate the data. Okay, so his analytical mind is looking for data. So what will be data? So he says, okay, let's play this game. Madam, you make two pots of tea. When making one first pot of tea, you add the sugar while brewing. And for the other pot, you add the sugar after filtering. And then your milk is added later. You give me these two pots. So the madam agrees. Madam brings two pots. So on the left side of the table, he puts the first kind, that is uh, where sugar was added while brewing. On the right hand side of the table, puts the other pot where sugar was added after filtering. Okay. And now he says, Madam, you give me uh, 10 cups. So she gets 10 cups. And now you get 5 cups. He writes at the bottom 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, the first method. And he puts or he pours tea from the first kettle on, on, my, on this side of the table uh, to these 5 cups. And on the other 5 cups at the bottom, he writes 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And then pours tea from this pot to these five cups. So these five cups, my left, is of type one, where sugar was added while filtering. No, while brewing. And this side I have got another five cups where tea was a sugar was added after filtering. Very clear, very clear distinction. So now what Sir Fisher does, he just you know, 
randomize this, move this way, that way, in such a way that you don't understand or you don't know which curve has got one or two at the bottom. Just some mixture. So now, it tells Madam, you take one one cup, give a sip or two, and tell me, is, is this type one or type two? And Madam says, oh, this is very simple. I'll just one one sip and I'll know which one is type one, which one is category, which is category two. Uh, the first method you will test horrible because sugar was added well well doing. Second test, what will test good because tea was added after filtering. Uh, so I will tell all the 10 correctly. He said, no, no, that's okay. Um, let's play the game and see how many you can tell correctly. And he was father of statistics. So he told, okay, you know, in statistics we allow some error. You don't need 100 percent correct. Still, we can make inferences. We do allow some concern of errors. So here, let me see one side. If your belief or conviction is true, you will tell all ten correctly, right? And in case your conviction is not true, that means you cannot distinguish between what is this kind or that kind of tea. Then we just make a just a random guess. And how many you can tell correctly? Roughly five of them. So telling five correctly gives you no information at all. But if telling ten correctly gives information that you can actually distinguish. And your claim is true. Let me allow some error, say some ten percent, twenty percent. So let me assume that even if you tell one mistake, that means if you tell nine or ten correctly, then I will assume that you are right. I will validate your belief. But if you tell less than 9 correctly, you have to agree that you have got uh, only belief, no sound scientific reason that uh, your belief is correct. So she agreed. The game was played. So she took one one cup and had a sip. Uh, you know how many she told correctly? Just seven. So she has to accept the defeat that uh, that the tea where sugar is added while brewing is horrible, is only her belief. She has no scientific reason to establish that. Okay. This is, I would call, the first instance of analytics. And here this was even even better because uh, see we want to understand something 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 from the data so here data was not there he created the data okay the modern days when you say analytics uh, the data is not really created the data is actually available so we have to we have that actually the data and from the data we want to Make seven inferences. So, ultimately, what is analytics is that we may have to generate data, but that's not mostly the case. We have plenty of data, and from the data, we want to uh, make sense out of it. What does the data speak? What can we infer from the data? What do you understand from the data? And that's what is called analytics, extracting information from the data. Okay, so the standard methods. Uh, I will again uh, talk about uh, two more examples. This is uh, two of the projects in which I was involved personally. So the first one is uh, counting tigers. To understand what is data, so uh, so we want to get an estimate of how many tigers are there in the Sundarbans area, and this we did this by about 20 years back, in 2001. Now you cannot go to Sundarbans and just meet every tiger, shake shake hand with the tiger and count them. Tigers are not going to come to you. 
and you, you don't see tiger anyway. But still, you have to count the tigers. So, what is adopted there? Uh, the different method. We should count tigers by the bug marks, the footprints. But the first time I understood the term in Bangla, we have a provocation or idiom. So, you get 18 scratches if a tiger catches you. So I didn't. I understood the meaning of that. That time, the tiger has four feet. The front two feet. It has got five, five. I think four toes. And the rear feet have got five toes each. So four plus four plus five plus five. I think five in the front, four at the back, the rear. So five plus five plus four by eighteen. Eighteen toes. And that's why we got the Bangla idiom, Bhagichila Asharoka. So you get you get this bug marks. And what is the habit of these tigers? Uh, they are very lazy. They don't like sun at all. And I think they are called Siberian tigers. They must have moved from Siberia to uh, down south, down south, and then they got stuck in Shumirwan. And they could move further. So they are very scared of sun. So they normally stay at the daytime. Uh, in deep, in deep, uh, inside deep uh, in the forest under the hethal tree. Okay, only when the night time when there is no sun and they are hungry, they come out for a prey. So they will probably catch a wild boar or a deer or a monkey and will eat. And after eating, they have to drink water. So they come to this. Uh, uh, they have called this in Bangla, they called Khari, some rivulets. Uh, so they will come for drinking water there. So when they drink water, they leave their footprints. So if you just go to Shundarvan, I have gone there 10 12 times. I have never seen a tiger, but I could see lots of bug marks for the footprints of these tigers. So this, uh, you can see these bug marks. And now they, they had a method. Uh, of counting tiger even before uh, we we were engaged with them, so they used to they used to take for some reason or other a left hind leg that, that fit that part because the way they put their the way they walk they first put the left hind leg first so there will be maximum pressure so you get the nice impression from there the others are not that deep so they take the impression of that what they do. They will take a plaster of Paris cast of that footprint and bring it to the what the, in the canning their laboratory. So they will go on moving all areas of different teams, all areas of Sundarban, and then they will collect this plaster of Paris casts. And there they have a sand bed in the lab. And they will put this plaster of Paris cast on, on the sand bed. And remove the plaster of Paris cast. So what they've done, they've recreated the footstep, the footprint, or the bug mark on that sand bed. And then they'll get a professional artist. They get a professional artist. And professional artist, what do they do? Uh, on a tracing paper, they drop this uh, these bug marks. Okay. So generate they generate thousands of uh, transparent sheets. With the drawings of the spark marks. Now, naturally, well, if I assume that bug marks are signatures, okay, then uh, my bug marks, no matter what on this well, how many you get it, they will be very similar. My, and my bug marks are different from somebody else's bug marks. So, if you have these two transparent sheets, you try to superimpose and see if they're fitting or not, they fit well, one on top of the other. Then you probably know that this is from the same tiger. Okay, the other one, if, if for two different tigers, they are not going to fit. There will be some, you know, some differences. You can find out there visually. So that's what they were doing. They were trying with these thousands of this, uh, uh, this uh, transparent sheets, and they were trying to match, by because match is a huge, humongous task. And at the end of that, they can actually get okay. This transparent sheet is probably from the same tiger. The basket. Then they put another bunch of uh, transparent sheet, another basket. That's another tiger. 
So the number of muskets, the number of tigers. And even uh, when there are uh, the forest, the forest officers come, they can show that if you take a basket and you superimpose any two of them, they model the switch. Take two from the two different baskets, then they look different. Okay, so that's what they do. So we wanted to uh, do something uh, on the basis of that. So they have this wonderful idea. Uh, they are not very educated, but they know the stuff very well. So what value do we get? So we try to make things better. You know, what they're actually doing is what we call in our data analytics language, clustering. Okay, this what is clustering. So if I have got many, many data points and many objects, okay, and if I see, okay, I put them in different cluster. A cluster means uh, the elements in the same cluster are more or less similar, and the elements in different cluster are distinct. So from a huge amount of objects, if I can group them like this, this is what is called clustering. Okay. So now this clustering is a very, very, very uh, uh, important tool in data analytics. And this is what we used on this tiger. So what we did, we have the pictures. So now the pictures become anything. So from the pictures, so we define features. Okay. Uh, I think we have defined some 46 features. And then I found that we need only seven features to distinguish a tiger. So we don't need all the 46 features. Seven, but we, we, we will be uh, talking about something something called principal component analysis. Out of this 46, maybe seven principal components. So the linear combinations of these features will be sufficient to you know, define a tiger. Okay, so on this data, so initially we have got some few thousand data. And it has got some 46 features. From there, we reduce the dimension to only seven, and keeping the idea that uh, we don't lose any information. Now we have formalized all these things. This is what is called principal component analysis or dimension reduction. The first thing that we're doing in big data analytics, we have huge dimensional data. We have to bring it down to a smaller dimension, which you can handle. But in this process, we are not going to lose information contained in that huge amount of dimension and these few dimensions. So this is the first thing we do with this big data stuff. We have to reduce the dimension. So dimension has to be reduced substantially so that we can handle it. So then we, we are, this is a very, uh, very standard technique we use, which we call principal component analysis or PCA. So on this data, we use PCA, data, uh, we just reduce the dimension. And then on this data, we apply cluster analysis algorithm. What is cluster analysis? As I told you uh, earlier, this means we'll group all this uh, data on the basis of these features in such a way that uh, within a group, they look, the variation is very minimal. But between groups, the variation is significantly larger. If we can do it, we have got different clusters. And we applied that, and we found that the number of tigers at that time was 90, as opposed to the government's estimate was 254 at that time. So we had a tussle with the government. They don't take this your method is nonsense. So they, uh, we must have heard that this was, we used to uh, understand that in 20 years back, it seems we had 254 tigers. But we didn't, we had 90. Now they have changed their strategy, uh, their stand. And now if you look into the Sundarban uh, forest data or information, you will find there will be about 100 tigers up there. So this hunting tigers, we have used the methodologies of what I call the big data analytics. And what are the tools used here? Number one, principal component analysis for dimension reduction and clustering for Google. And number of groups in this case was number of tigers. Okay, so this is my, my one big data analytics uh, real life example. Uh, and the methodology, methodology used in the topic, the proper methods we are, we are course on big data analytics, all these things are taught in, in great details. Okay, the last example I will talk about, yes, I read about 10 minutes, uh, is about a student of mine. Uh, 
who was working on you know the name of Google is Python. This is very very open source software, very com very very commonly used for this analytics problems. If you want to actually solve the data analytics problems, it is Python. This is uh, very very uh, popular uh, in the industry. Now Python. Um, when he was working with the Python at different versions. So Python 2.6 and now it is Python 2.7. I think now it is probably Python 2.8. Uh, but the good part about Python was that if you are using Python and if you have faced any problem using Python, they have a website where you can actually lodge a complaint that I have problem, this, this is the chat. And they would normally address your problem pretty soon, pretty fast. So once you launch your complaint on the Python website, a software engineer will look into your problem and will reply how to resolve this problem. Now, most of the cases, these problems are trivial. I couldn't use uh, Python uh, properly. But in many cases, these problems were actually real problems. The problem was with Python. So it's not the fault of the user. But then they rectify it, make it more user friendly and so on. Okay, so those are called, you know, you can park. So there are, there are bugs. Now, so what, what they have if you get into this bugzilla database uh, for Python, say database called bugzilla. In Python, say 2.6, you'll get historically all the complaints about Python. And they will write against each complaint, whether it's just, just a meaningless complaint, if it is meaningful, is it a serious complaint or a trivial complaint? Okay, some are trivial complaints, some are very, uh, very serious complaints. Okay, so they have this data. And at that point of time, I think they have felt that 2.6 is probably not that reliable. So they. <coughs> Get a new version, I thought 2.7. And they claimed that this is more reliable. I don't know what they mean by reliable. So, my the student uh, thought, Bimala, let's work on that. Is it really more reliable or not? Okay, and we have got thousands of you know, such complaints registered. Uh, that. So, even 2.7 was there. So, even for 2.7, now we have accumulated lots of complaints. I remember thousands of complaints of 2.6, 2.7 over a period of time, say three, four years. Okay, so for large, for a long period, we have got complaint records to each one. So we still each time to see, can we find a methodology by which we can talk about is the new version more reliable? This is a very deep analytic thought. But they are claiming second new version is more reliable. Now we don't even know what is what will mean by reliability and is it really more reliable. So let's try to do our own. So he, he was thinking, thinking and he came up with uh, an idea. And then he told us, you know, Vimalda, I have this idea. The idea is very simple. This is this is what is what I call analytics. So you look at the time series of say for 2.6, Python 2.6. You have got you look at the times over the different days for the last two three years. Uh, this bug, this bug, this bug, this bug. The the known bugs are you just omit because it was the fault of the user. So you just drop this. But then they have classified serious bug or not so serious or trivial bug. So you can see over a period of time, uh, let me call one to be very serious bug, two to be not so serious bug. So we have on a time series timeline, they will have a sequence of one, two, one, two, one, one, two, blah, blah, blah. So we convert this information into these two time series. This is over a period of time, sequence of one and two. One means serious bug, two means uh, not so serious bug. Same thing we do it for Python 2.7. And then he says, now one is a serious bug. Now this is his innovative idea, the analytic mind. Uh, 
which actually changed this entire industry uh, uh, in a very different way. So now he says, you know, if you have more tools between two consecutive ones, that means between two serious bugs, you get many, 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 many uh, trivial bugs. Okay? That is probably more reliable than between two serious, if you get less number of uh, non trivial bugs. That means if serious bugs are more sparse, then this is more reliable than if the serious bugs are not so sparse. And how do you measure it? So between two ones, how many twos are there? So look into two consecutive ones, how many twos are there? How many twos are there? How many twos are there? And then he was trying to look at the distribution of this number of twos for 2.6 and 2.7. And if you plot the distribution, they look pretty much the same, not much different. So our conclusion was that the Python 2.7 is probably uh, not more reliable than 2.6. Yes, it's user-friendly, but I cannot say this is reliable, more reliable. So this actually you know, came in the industry and uh, this is something what we call, some data we call crowdsourced data. It's a new subject started. Crowdsourced data means people voluntarily put the data. Now, if you are using uh, Python, you may not you know, complain, you know, just forget it. So complaining was completely voluntary and we have no control. Even if, even if you don't know how many people are using Python 2.6, 2.7, you have very incomplete information. People give voluntary data, it's not that you are asking from them. So these are called cloud source data. So getting doing analytics means that getting some information from this cloud source data has been a challenge. And this was probably the first major breakthrough from cloud source data also. People can do certain things. These are statistical techniques. And the last one, maybe I thought this, that would be last, but let me see, I, I can talk a much more important, uh, my last point, uh, this we have done, we have done still. So the analytics. You know, in, a, in, a, in the steel industry, uh, blast furnace. From there, the molten pure steel comes out. There is a huge manufacturing process. And if there is some defect in the process, maybe the ore was bad, maybe the air pressure was low, Maybe the temperature went high, suddenly low or high. So there are certain things, changes in the in this manufacturing process. Sometimes this dust uh, is stopped. And then Tata Steel has got a wonderful set of engineers. They'll fix it. Okay. And uh, if the blast fund stops for one hour, you can't imagine how, what is the extent of the loss of that. Of Tata Steel, of any 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 steel company. So, when we are talking to the Tata Steel management, we are telling: Is it possible to make a little bit of ahead of prediction that now I tell them maybe in next three four hours, uh, blast furnace may go may stop may stop fun may stop functioning. If we could do that. Then they took a preventive maintenance already. The engineers will already start working into it, look in the process again, try to fix things if there is anything wrong, and so that in that three four hours they take care of the problem. The blast will stop. So they were asking me, is it possible to make a some kind of prediction a little ahead of time, maybe four hours, maybe three hours, maybe two hours, so that we can have it. What they call preventive maintenance. And then I, I looked into the data of all the failures. You have to understand what is meant by failure. But there are many, many, many factors, variables that is involved with this production process. I think there are 60 such factors which actually affect this production process. Now, they have the data, all these 60 factors, they normally, in every 10 minutes, they record it. They put sensors and they record it. So they have these 60 um, data points 
they were terribly in trouble. And they have record of uh, these failures, that this world there is a failure. And the engineers found this was a problem. So they have a huge failure, failure record. So last five years, there was about 30, 40 uh, M's of blast furnace uh, stopped. And there are five blast furnaces that have stopped. So they have got a huge amount of data. So you have to understand the failure in order to predict the failure. This is very important in the analytics. So there is something called in statistics. Uh, I cannot, this is part of a course. It needs a few lectures to uh, cover this topic. What you call logistic regression. So here we try to make a prediction of failure at some point of time. Now, if we predict, say the probability of failure in the next four hours is 0.8, that means that's a trigger. It immediately goes to control loop, and the engineers start looking into the entire process and they, they do what they call predict, predictive maintenance. And adopting this analytics procedure of logistic irrigation, what you call predictive analytics, is called predictive analytics. I'm trying to do something ahead of time. Okay? And then immediately they can uh, find out the reason. And once they find out the reason, they can tell you have to do these, 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 these modifications so that it doesn't stop. That's what is called prescriptive analytics. You are giving a prescription. Prescriptive analytics, you are finding possible what is going to happen in the future. And then if the future turns out to be bad for you, then you have to identify from these processes uh, what could be remedy, what step, uh, uh, what step should be taken for its remedy. That's called prescriptive analytics. So these are the most important things uh, these days, predictive and prescriptive. And I tell you, so there are methods. Uh, so basically all the methods come from statistics. But since uh, you have to handle a huge amount of data, computer science plays a very important role. Our standard or usual statistical methods cannot handle a huge amount of data. So I learned statistics uh, from my uh, Eastern days, non azure days. And the way we learned, the subject developed, we didn't really handle so much of data. And most of our methods will fail. Data is huge. Just like memorizing nouns doesn't help me in multiplying to large numbers. So you have to build something more on top of it. Okay, and that's what is I call analytics. Okay, thank you. If you have any small questions, queries, Yes. So the uh, anchor may you know, get into it. If somebody has any question, they can answer. joining us today. We are extremely grateful to have you within us. Thank you so much for your valuable words and precious time. People like you will always be the inspiration for today's generation. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Everyone, please stay tuned. Next, we have a session by Mr. Shomesh Dashgupto. He will have a session on career opportunities and challenges in new normal.
You are very thankful to get your very successful and well person in existence among all of us. I am extremely glad to introduce you all with our revered speaker, Mr. Shomesh Dashku, Vice Chairman CIM Society. Currently, he is the Director of India Power Corporation Limited, an integrated company with a presence across all verticals of power sector. He has around three decades of experience in brand management and human resource management. He is a graduate in mechanical engineering and a postgraduate in human resource management from IIT Kharagpur. He also has a certificate in total quality management from BITS, Sweden. During his role as the group president of India Power Corporation Limited, he oversees the company's corporate affairs, people management, strategic management and government business relations. Mr. Dal Gupto was also the chairman of NIPM PPM Trust and vice president South Asia South Pacific Federation of Human Resource Management. Besides, he
He is also on the Executive Committee of Employers Federation of India till July 2020. Presently, he is the Chairperson, Human Resources, Industrial Relation and Productivity Committee in the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Now, I request Mr. Shomesh Taraj Gupto to convey your valuable lecture on career opportunities and challenges of new norm. Thank you. Thank you, Madhupurna. Uh, my acceptable uh, and it should be uh, my audio is okay to all? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I doubt that I welcome you all to students, teachers, all senior people, management representative of CIIM on a very special day of yours today. Today is your 18th anniversary of a college. Uh, and I am very happy to note that we are celebrating that entire day to different knowledge base sessions, workshops, and other, other things, which is very good. Uh, last two years, I am um, connected to the college because initially Mr. Azizul Hawk and Indanishul invited me to join in the college, and I was there, and then now I am vice chairman of the governing body. And in my interaction, the different people in the last two years, I realized that the college is a different type of college. The reason is, it is not any promoters driven college, it is a trustee driven college, and it is a dream of a legendary and missionary person of Kushan And Kushan Kushur has a lot of ambition for the education, I know that, and he has conceived the idea of the college and he promoted that college. So, with that particular idea that, that they can offer, a reliable education to the community. There will be a transparency in the system in terms of the cost, in terms of the quality, so people can get a good education in terms of uh, pay, pay with the reasonable rate. So I'm happy that we are celebrating this 18 years and I'm confident that you boys and girls will go from strength to strength and uh, after completion of your uh, year, the 19th year will come and ultimately, the college will excel to our strength. Today, Milan uh, Dion has discussed with me today's uh, topic. He was talking to me that what should be my point of discussion today. I was telling that now only one thing is available in India, in the world, that is the pandemic, the, the, this COVID coronavirus. People are all leading to a different world now. Maybe somebody may say that corona period, post corona period. So, uncertainty. So, much better that uh, affected people are basically affected people are affected people are basically uh, sorry, sorry, affected people are basically uh, students because your, your future is important. So, in my presentation today, I will talk to you for three things. First of all, I will discuss about what is the challenge industry faced during this pandemic and this COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak. Number two, I will discuss in the corporates or industry, what were the innovative ideas to overcome these challenges. And this innovative idea was has yes, come from the compulsion. So when something comes from compulsion, that is the genuine and stable. So for the purpose, I discussed something corporate level and industry level, what was the, uh, what was the measure we have taken to face these challenges, and when these two things will be discussed, so you will be clear, you are aware that how the industry is facing it. Then I will say something about your property, which is called industry expectation, your preparedness, how you can do yourself post COVID or new normal situation. So I will try to restrict my presentation as much as much as possible in the time. Then I am also expecting that some question may come. Because when I'm talking to the students, I always love to answer their questions uh, rather than giving a one-way communication to all people. So I'll leave an interaction. So I am expecting that I'll get some question from your side, your education, from the industry person, and I'll try my level best. My representative will be from the Bengal Chamber of Commerce, Chairman of the Committee, and also as the Director of the Board. So now, uh, let's discuss the matter. It is okay. I think the format is okay to all of you. So, so now, uh, let me start my first part. 
challenges faced by the institution industries. You might be pulling the head in month of April when the really does uh, outbreak has started to hit part. In the month of March, we have zero idea about the impact of such a thing. Because we never come across this. So the first challenge is to the industry, commercial houses and corporate workers, the uncertainty of the particular problem. See, uncertainty is such a thing which is very difficult to predict. I mean, we went through uncertainty in the month of April, we are uncertain. In the month of May, we are uncertain. When it will be over? Till today, we are in the end of the August. We don't know actually what will happen within two months or three. So the biggest challenge to industry, that is the uncertainty. Because uncertainty, unable to measure that, you cannot chalk out your plan, your strategy, everything depends on the time period. So if it is for two years, we can do something. For two months, we are doing something. So for here, company and industries are unable to manage the show because they are not very certain about the time period. That's the first challenge. Second challenge was, we have no past experience. Last 100 years, we have not, we never come across such a situation. So we don't know when we are realizing that everything is closed. We are realizing commercial processes, commercial system is closed, more traffic, and no civilization. Everybody inside the room, inside the house, but we have to run the company. We are supposed to run the company without a single support from the external world. So that is a something very, very new thing, and we have no experience to handle it in the last few years. Third point was challenges for the industrial corporate houses, the inadequate infrastructure. I am talking to particularly India. See, we are talking about the work from home. But in India, perhaps we are aware that the work from home concepts are basically for the IT industries. But when we talk about the general industry, brick and mortar industry, your manufacturing industry, people are not used to work from home. So, inadequate infrastructure to handle this pandemic in, in, in an inadequate infrastructure to challenge this uncertainty it was a big challenge to the corporate people and industries. Fourth, very important, there is a massive panic situation and negativity in the minds of the people. Whether it is a promoter, maybe the investor, maybe the employee, senior employee, junior employee, even the uh, attendant of the company, security guard, everybody was in panic situation. And they are full of negative concerns. They don't know what happened. Whether, whether we get salary, whether my salary will be protected, whether my job will be protected after two, three months. So all kinds of uncertainty. Investors thinking, should I invest money? Money as a money will come back. Promoters are thinking and it is investment. So all these things in terms of the panic and negativity is one of the major issues of which it happens. So we the corporate people who are in the uh, senior level position. We are thinking how to address all the issues. At the end of the day, there are some of the company or all the company who really should run. And you know, the question is when this is a common truth across all the industry, it is true that some industry be affected badly, some is um, intermediately, some is a small way, but everybody more or less affected. So the second part of my, my presentation, how we are overcoming this challenge. What was the innovative thing that time company has adopted? And I am telling you, innovation has two reasons. Innovation can be done out of the choice and one innovation out of compulsion. And here it is out of compulsion. And when something is out of compulsion, your innovation is genuine that time. Because it means the struggle for existence. You should do it, otherwise you perish. So the struggle for the fitness is very, very important. Struggle for the existence. So all the innovation across different industries are there to address the issue, otherwise you will not survive. So first innovative idea or first innovative strategy to all these investors and promoters that we have to save cash. You young, you my friends, young friends, you might be knowing to run the organization, what type of organization you are, you require your knowledge also. You require a capital, which is called the working capital. Working capital is a money 
which will help you to run the organization, your expenditure, your different types of uh, pets, that is for the working capital. So how you can manage the working capital when you have to recover? Because suddenly from 24th of April, entire thing was locked down for the month. So nothing will happen. So how the business will come? Government can give a subsidy to the government department, to the government of the loan and some, some strategy. But to run the organization of the private companies, the main challenge is idea in terms of the uncertainty. So whether the thing will be over by one month, and the month of May or June, somebody may say about four months. So desperately, management first call is to save cash. So that you can preserve the cash and use this guys rightfully to manage your work. So the first second point innovative approach company has adopted, and that was we are discussing in all of the people, cost reduction. It means we have analyzed all industry, analyze what is the risk of practice in organization. We are may not be aware with the hardship comes before that. What were the wasteful practices? Is there any unimportant cost? Is there any adequate support which can be avoided? Is there any support service cost which can be suspended? So people are thinking, brainstorming, talking to each other to find out how to reduce this cost without affecting the major part of the business. So a lot of innovation, innovative techniques has been achieved. A lot of innovative plan being developed to serve to in a proportion to save the cost. Third point, irrespective of any sector, whether it is power, manufacturing, IT, banking, service, tourism, whatever, people are thinking how to do a new reorganization strategy. People are realize that existing way of working will not happen. We should run the business in a different style, different organization structure. So, Organizational structure development and implementation of that also was very, very important that time as a strategy. That was the third one. Fourth one, revisiting job role and function. What happened when everything is okay, people are comfortable, you don't mind analyzing too much. There are hundreds of job roles already in your organization, there are 20 job roles, 20 job functions. We are, we are not aware that is it possible that can we take it? 20, we can reduce to 50. I'm talking about the job role, not the person. The job role can be revisited. So when your job role can be revisited, your entire thing should be, you should, you should revisit it and try to find out in today's context where the challenges come, when we're unable to attend the office, when my business is going down 30%, 70%, 60%, uh, some 80%. Some of the company, they have lost their cheapest business month of April. So in that situation, when you have no income, but you have no hope, after some time, the income will come back, industry will survive. So for that purpose, in this period, maybe two months, maybe 20, maybe 20 months, maybe 12 months, how to manage your show? For that purpose, which job is important, which job is unimportant, and revisiting that. Next point was alternate way of working. People are thinking in a big way, because initially I was talking to you just now, working from home is a concept in India basically for the IT sector. But IT is only a, a small portion of our industry. I'm talking about manufacturing industry, uh, monolith industry, industry. We are not used to uh, habituated to work from home. You require so that people are because I have worked back, working there. As a residential service, uh, or supply. So with this situation, what should be my alternate way of working? We have to manage a show without a manpower, what to do? If my manpower is X, how I can manage 10% of X? Because they are able to come due to the vulnerability of the transport, there's a no proper, no proper infrastructure for the government side, and people are in panic. Every day people are thinking that they are affected in COVID, so what will happen? So for that purpose, there's a psychological problem and people are not attending from it. So, there is an alternate way people are. Next one, management day and night was examining the 
examining and analysis each and every contract. Contract with the vendor, contract with the uh, contractors, engagement contract, appointment letters, each and everything. Each and everything because the company requires series of contracts. Contracts with the vendor, contract with the customers, contract with the uh, engagement, with your retainer, your contract appointment, and finally your appointment letters. And try to find out, we have to have some innovative way of addressing the issue. What should be the changes required in the way of uh, methodology of the industry? So that end of the day, we can get effectiveness out of my innovative plan. Uh, next, next was the, uh, what was the adoption, what the innovation part? Cost curtailment man without consent. So manpower is the most sensitive thing. I'm telling you one thing, my dear friends, 99% private organized sector people, promoters or donors, they don't want downside. Because, you know, before COVID 2019, on the month of uh, April, uh, February, back February, there's already job curtain was happening. People have reached a minimum level of due to this recession of in, recession in industry recession started in India last one year before the COVID. So India was facing a big challenges in tough recession. So our plan is to rationalizing manpower, not the downsizing, the right size. So that can be for a long, long time. So in COVID time, really we are not thinking management, uh, different company, they are termination, cessation of job over the last few months. They are trying to do how we can reduce our cost without terminating. I'll give you a good example. What happens, suppose, you know, a company, maybe there are 200. And out of that, maybe uh, some people in this particular COVID time, we have, all, we have realized that this type of role can be handled from the whole. This type of the people are basically domain providers. They may not be part of executor on routine level. So that type of thing, if you offer these people that say, now we cannot continue with all the people like saying service change. In your case, you are operating from your home. Maybe your home is in Pune, Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, whatever. My company is in any location. And we required you for some function, for some domain. And your contract and engagement will revisit. I may tell him that you are going to submit to give you X, I'll give you X by two, or X by three, or 30%, 40% of X. So that my cost cutment is effective. And the person I'm offering to somebody, he has a time to other jobs. Because you know, I am a, I am a domain provider of those finance. I am a domain provider of the secretary, domain provider of some routine function where I have a good knowledge. And when I am realizing that my same company don't need me for a full time, I can do two, three companies' jobs sitting in my own home. So when I am sitting in my own home and doing three companies' job, basically end of the day, end of the month, my my income from the fifty company more or less same. So companies are first revisiting the possibility without permanently terminating some people, even to contract members, how we can alternate arrangements of engaging them. But the process, they may, they may uh, compromise something of the remuneration, but at the end of the day, they are not out of the That was the that part we are uh, discussing that time. Here, one thing also very important, when we are talking about uh, uh, cost curtailment, cost curtailment also we have done in our company and other companies have done that there is a different level top management, middle management, and executors. So we have decided as a player from the industry that mostly we will not touch the executors, the low income group, starting from because these people are really struggling in trying times. So company generally, organized sectors are always in the motion to support them. But the leadership team who can afford for some time, but the senior management, there is a lot of innovative approach to suspend their salary, not to cut it. Suppose you know, somebody is getting X, I may say 20-30% of the X, X salary component would be not paid today. It is your investment in my organization. And when the crisis will be over, we'll send the money back to you. So you are part of the crisis. You are 
donating or you are contributing some portion of your salary to our CTC to my investment. So when my good day will come back, in six months, seven months, one year down the line, that money will be given back. So the senior leadership team is okay, they're happy, they are thinking that yes, I have to lead the organization. Suppose if I'm getting X, I have to manage the passage time with the 30% lower than the X. And by this process, company is saving money. There are some fringe benefits which company are paying to employees other than salary, living cash plans, your um, LTC, traveling advances, all of them. So companies are coming with a solution with the solution. See, now in one year, we cannot entertain all this. Nothing is discontinued. Everything will be in the system. But right now, for one year, we cannot do all this. Thing. So that will be part of your cash reserve compared with that cash. I want to maintain my cash, not spending the money which I can avoid. It. So that is called the cost cut event. So I am telling you, effective work has been done. In the last four or five months, as the Chamber of Commerce, we are interacting with the association in my power sectors, you no, know, we are, a, I am part of a emergency service. So from very first day, I cannot stop my function. I am supplying, we are supplying power in some sort of that bed, and most industries are shut down. So first one month, for one and two months, our revenue was dropped out to 70 years. We were getting 30 percent. But we have to supply. We have to have a continued same thing for CSC Calcutta. So when we're supplying some essential commodity, my all operations should be intact. I cannot close down my substation. I cannot close down the office. I cannot close, close down my uh, generating station. So for people who are in the job, there's a panic in the family. I will not need my husband. I will not need my son. He will be problem. So companies have to arrange their logistics, counseling, talking to the people, their family member, no problem. They are need the protection. In your husband, son, or father will be working in the company. Company will take care of other needs, something required, there's no public transport, we will do that. So, this type of thing substantially they are organizing and we're reducing costs. So, this is certain thing, and this is this is the one way of management management. Thing. Management also puts a lot of time and energy to train their people, which is very, very important. But I said to you in India. 80% organization other than IT centers, they are not used to work. work. So when I am, suppose I have a, uh, there's an executor of 20, the 40 people are part. These people are supposed to work in their home. They may not have a computer, they may not have a system of working for telephone, they may not have a proper uh, bandwidth, they may not have a proper communication. So train them properly and tell them, see, on rotation you can come, or you are work from home for this time, utilize this tool. For this period, we'll pay your uh, admin charge, everything. So by the process, there's a continuous training was going on from the organization to the people, how you can make yourself habituated in new normal. We're talking about the new normal situation. How you can work in new normal, maybe you are working for 30 years in the company, in age maybe 55, 56, you are uh, near to retirement also. But that time also, there's a change required. And to bring that change, continuous there is interaction. And that we are called your training in our language, training and retraining. Retraining your people and reskilling. Reskilling, training, and also counseling. When you are counseling your employees, there are four levels of counseling. Why four levels? Because suppose if you are the employee, suppose you are the city. Employee is passing through the four levels. When the COVID times, one is the personal level, my personal worry, my personal panic, my personal threat, negativity. So I have to counsel you overcome your personal problem. But that is not enough. I have to be there for the second level, which is called the social level. You have to work in society, the pressure from the society, the demand from the society, they are not allowing you to go out. They are creating a lot of problems. So you have to encounter the social part. So there is continuous training required from the management side to the people in social side. So personal, social. Next is the profession. 
I should I should have a conducting training or counseling to the people what type of training you require now. Suppose you are sitting in a home for two months, three months, you cannot come to office. At this time, there will be continuous learning programs, online on online program, virtual program. So we will impart you education, we will impart you training, skill, commercial, and other knowledge so that you are very you after the post period. So in the two, three months, company will be arranging a lot of professional training for the people. So the job which you are not supposed to do before, you should do it after the COVID. Last level, which is very important, spiritual. Suppose I am convincing a person personally, socially, and professionally, but that is one part is missing. I am unable to make the person mentally stable. To create a problem mindset, mentally stable, we are required to train in spiritual. Because spiritually, we have to tell them this is nothing. This challenge is to come. 90% of your physical problems are originating from your mental condition. If you are weak mentally, if you are nervous mentally, you are already gone. So, spiritually, we have to, there is a way to spiritually. Nothing is difficult. The brighter day will come. To the spiritual orientation, I am not talking about religion, it is spiritual thing, spiritual discussion, spiritual interaction will help the person to come out from his office. So each and every company is doing that, or organize big companies, so that the entire people who are working there after four months, five months, six months, when COVID will be over, they are the better human resource. They are the much effective human resource. They can contribute in the organization much better way and much bigger. So that was the entire thing in terms of the COVID pandemic. Now, this is my second part. My final part, which basically your part, that you also come across in situation. We are all studying in your college, you know, classes. So there are, there are online classes. So your teachers are not unable to teach you physically and you also are certain whether whether exam will be over, whether we promoted first year to second year, second to third, report with the outgoing people, what will happen to your job this time, what happened, all this uncertainty. And you are sitting from the young brain, sitting I don't want to do what to do, you are not you are not at all confident to confuse. So in that situation, this four or five months, I think we've done it already. How to prevent this? So that is now coming from your side. Why I'm telling you this is very important for you? Because you people, you may say, sir, there's no industry, no growth. After passing up the college, we'll be unemployed. We heard that. We heard that people are losing job. We heard that no new job is not creating now. So when there's no job creation, when the existing people have no job, so we need to know what we'll do. What will go? So my action to you, positive part is much more than good. Why I'm telling you, you are realizing now every challenge is, every problem has a gift in inside his hand. Inside his hand. Suppose if you talk about a problem, inside inside problem there's a gift. We require the gift that the reason we need the problem. Unless we have the problem, we will not get the gift which is inside the problem. So here also, this problem of uh, pandemic or COVID, whatever you said, there is a gift. Gift means it will learn you how to lead a new normal life. It will it will also teach you to discover yourself. Also teach you your inner strength. It also will teach you what was the what were the best practice we have seen it. We have seen today how rightly, how effectively we are working without a physical contact. I am telling you, in my own organizations, we have measured in the last four months, our benchmark has increased, productivity has increased, cost effectiveness has increased, we have profitability has increased. Each and every company, they are measuring today that a lot of best good practice element can be eliminated. And this cost has a value, serving of cost. And people realize that I should be more and more, more and more effective for the new normal life. For the purpose, you people are realizing now, there is a, in India, after COVID, I'm talking about maybe uh, the optimistic figure, maybe December, or early for the next year. India will come in with a proper shock. The reason is why, 
I'm telling you, you're already realizing all over, all over the world, there's a problem with the Chinese. Not a single country happy all over, all over the world to go away with China. So for the purpose, you know, in the world, if you talk about the worldwide, there are two countries who are at par in terms of the human excellence, China and India. And India, for the last four, five years, been seven years, not the like, we are neglecting manufacturing setup. We are neglecting, we are putting and putting more and more attention in our in our service sectors. But now time has come, we also started putting our energy, money, thinking for manufacturing sector. I'm talking about Atmanivar India. Maybe the Prime Minister given a slogan. Now we are realizing that India has a more ability to come out as a manufacturing hub. Because it is very true. We are excellent in service sector. But service sector excellence has a limitation. Unless you have a proper strength in your manufacturing setup, you cannot create good business. You cannot create generation of service. So employment generation, revenue generation, GDP growth, everything depends on the country's backbone. One is your manufacturing setup and one is agriculture setup. So the agriculture in India is always good. They are all independent. Now India will be putting more and more emphasis on manufacturing setup. And a lot of money will be invested in India, not to outside. So this money will be generated and create more and more wealth inside it. Similarly, other multinational people or other international investors, they have no choice now. When they are talking about the human resource Excel, when there's a no chance for China and all, they are, uh, they are, they are obviously, there are other options in the South Asia, India. Somebody may be thinking for Vietnam, somebody may be thinking for Malaysia, but ultimately, India in terms of the human resource, it is at par with you. So the investment will be started coming to India when people will realize internationally that India already oriented themselves towards the manufacturing setup. And India is now has a mindset to do both manufacturing and service. So India is a very good prospect next year 2021 onwards. So you the people will be coming out for the future, future business, future job. You have an excellent excellent because now maybe we cannot serve it because still we are uncertain except time. We have to wait for the vaccine and then something will come out. When suppose everything is coming out, we are we are comfortably working in the organization. That time also, the new normal thing will dominate. The new normal thing or the bad practice which we are which we have done last 10 years in this country. There is no room for the bad practice. We will learn a lot of things at once. I'm telling you that, you know, like this seminar, today we are leading a conference. Just think I'm giving a small, a small example. We are celebrating your college uh, 18th anniversary. So, in the earlier times, it might have some monetary, monetary role. You have to spend money for the decorator, your chairs, your table, infrastructure, some, some expenditure. Somebody may not be available that day. Somebody may say, I have another meeting. I cannot go to college, take one hour to go there. So there are a lot of limitations and you are spending a lot of money. Now the same thing, from the morning, you are organizing to celebrate your 10th anniversary with the same quality and better quality. You are not spending money that much, number one. You are managing people giving times. The city today, I'm a little out of Calcutta, a little suburban Calcutta. From here also, I'm communicating you. I know that I have to block myself from five o'clock. So for the purpose, it is difficult for me today if physically I should attend your college. But now it is quite okay with me to attending this thing to virtual. So similarly, there are a lot of interactions happening, actual uh, virtual platform, which is much effective than the actual reality. So the new normal will not allow people to do restful practices. For many, I'm talking about these two troubles, it will be drastically rationalized. Suppose I am a board member of a power company. In my board, there are 10, mem 10 members. Out of 10, 6 members out of the out of country. So to organize group meeting. People are coming to Calcutta, they stay, their lifestyle will to stay, their business class tickets, huge expenditure. Now in this COVID time, we have organized three, four board meetings with different companies, all in virtual. And I'm telling you that efficiency of my board meeting, virtual board meeting, 
is much, much better than the actual truth. People have the time, they can deliver their presentation, they are they're showing PowerPoint, they are chatting, they are talking to each other, uh, everybody has a free time for their particular, particular that time. So quality of time, no disturbance, and there is no, no extra cost. So people are getting each and every benefit of a board meeting, strategic meeting, over the future. So only there is something which is execution that has to be continued. I cannot, I cannot um, supply power to you without going to substation. I cannot generate, I cannot supply you power without generation. So my plant will operate, so my substation will operate. That is only the 30 40 percent. Balance 70 percent cases, 60 percent cases. We can revisit that meeting people physical without people without meeting people physical. We can have better results. So you people when you be joining the industry, joining it, expect two things from you. How smart you are is the normal. People will ask you the question at the time of interview also. In the six months, seven months, what value addition you made on you? What type of investment you have made on you? You are there, only you have spent your time by Netflix and Prime movies, or you have done some positive. People may say that how you have divided your, your 12 hours of day in a, in a working day uh, or a holiday. But they know, no, no holiday, people are working. Today Sunday, Sunday also. So my question is, you people will be asked question in the interview. This six months, four months, five months down the line, which have spent a new normal period and the near future, what was your own investment on you? What skill you have already acquired? Upskilling, reskilling, what type of innovations can be there? If really tomorrow India will be excelling up and even India, or manufacturing setup, we should the chill, energy, skill like a manufacturing nation. So when you are the manufacturing nation, service nation, skill set, we have already. We have already the skill set of service, service country. But now, as a manufacturing country, we should acquire more and more skill, more and more attitudes to do this manufacturing. And new people who are entering the new organization, there should be a keenness, there should be a chill to you, that yes, I can contribute in manufacturing also. I can contribute to plan manufacturing, to sell my manufacturing products, to upgrading my uh, quality. Three things are important. Why, if you want to maintain as a country for manufacturing, reliability, quality, and affordability. These three, three things, unless you project in Atmanirbhar Bharat, nobody will come or to us. We should be reliable in terms of our product. People as doubt that China is not reliable. Some Chinese products are so reliable, we have seen, but most times they are not reliable. So reliability, quality, and end of the day is the affordability. Entire world is rushing to China for the affordability purpose. So we have to know, we have to find out the innovation, a lot of uh, uh, upgradation in the system, so that we can go for the upgradation in terms of the quality, in terms of the affordability. So these people, you, the young people who will be coming at the uh, our experience will be, you should do justice with your work, liability, quality, and quality. So my dear boys and girls, that is my overall idea, overall, overall impression on you. You should not be discouraged. There will be a big thing coming up. I'm talking about, I cannot say that will happen tomorrow. Really, there is a positive sign there. That's it will come as soon as possible. And now also there are a lot of good things coming in terms of the virus effect. So if everything is okay, maybe from 2021, India has an excellent future. Because if, suppose you forget about the investment for outside, if India governments take a decision, or state governments of different states, we will be manufacturing the same thing in India. Now, right now, more than 70% thing the importing products in terms of your industry, I'm not talking about your luxury items. Industrial items. If we can do this industrial items manufacturing inside India, it's a big scope. And who will do that? You engineers will do that. You are from engineering college, you have done engineering degree, so you require to do a lot of your job in manufacturing. IT has a limitation. IT that will continue. But don't project your work for IT for the future. IT will be everywhere. Automation, digitization, that is a way of life. 
with IT or without IT. So the same thing. Ultimately, manufacturing job also will be IT driven. So my boys and girls, my request to you, you do justice with your education and you should invest your six, seven months, maybe next two months or so. I am not putting a simple life in months. Nothing big thing will happen in this year. It will take some time. So automatically you utilize because this question people will ask you in an interview. What was your investment in COVID time? new thing? Upskilling, reskilling, uh, knowledge enhancement. Kya kya have you done some online course about uh, global villages? I'm getting global village, paying a small fees. We have a course. So, a lot of uh, upskilling is not impossible. People will ask you, what kya kya course? What kya kya upgrade? Kya? So, the HR, what is the name of the risk? Or is it some, some time for your approach? So, do that. If you've not started it, do that. Try to do that. Different qualitative course, short term course, which has an impact on the manufacturing, which has an impact in data analysis, which has an impact in the process improvement, which has an impact in quality improvement. You should do that thing so that you may say in the interview, yes, I have done the ECD during this pandemic time. With this, I have a best wishes to all of you, all young people here. I am confident that you have a very good future. And you will do a selling in the result in a good college. I have confidence on your teachers and professors and management. They will create opportunity to learn better and today and tomorrow to excel. Thank you and good day. Any question I'm handing over to the uh, moderator. If anything happens, please question if possible. Yeah, go to part. Does anyone have any question? Uh, so I don't think anyone has any doubts. Okay. Thank so thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for enriching all of our vision and knowledge. Uh, we are very grateful to have you among us. Uh, thank you so much for your valuable time and precious words. Thank you, Mother Parna. Thank you to the college give me a chance to speak with you. I hope to see you again. Thank you and good day. Thank you, sir. I want to convey my heartly thanks to all of our honorable speakers once again. Now we have reached to an end of our entire program. On 23rd August 2003, former minister revered Sri Prashanta Shur sir cultivated an initiative for the betterment of professional courses. Day by day, this initiative became an esteemed name among the Educational Institute of Kolkata gradually. And after a long journey, we are here who are associated with this esteemed institute. During this journey, CIM has faced a lot of catastrophic situations from several aspects, but the term quitting is absent in the dictionary of CIM. CIM fought, did struggle, conquered all of those obstacles. Thus, we could observe this, the 18th Foundation Day of Calcutta Institute of Engineering and Management today with all of its dignity and glory. Year after year, several students come to this institute and after the completion of their course duration, they leave. But CIM remains in their heart for the rest of their life. Because CIM doesn't provide friends or teachers, it provides a family. Many students will come and go through this campus. But when the date, 23rd August, will come in their year, we will get together again like this. With this hope, we are finishing our program here. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and giving it a great success. Now, I would request our principal sir to deliver a few words.
हेलो 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 सर गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट एंड अल दार्टिसिपेंट हमें देखो एकदम शेष मुहूर्त इसे दाड़ी आज के इभेंटर आज के सारा दिन धरे तुम्हारे सवार चेष्टाते आज के एक खूब अल्प दिन समय मध्य एक जिन क्या करते पे बे कई लास्ट दो दिन धरे भाविल प्रोग्राम कैमन कि कारण आप खूब हाथ अल्प समय पे बे कैक जन विशिष्ट लोक जन संगे छ फले जो प्रोग्राम ठीक करना तेज़ कलेज प्रेस्टिजर बेपार छो से विशेषकर बोलो कैक जन स्टूडेंट के जरा दो तीन दिन धरे निरलस परिश्रम कर प्रोग्राम सकसेस कर सबा के शुभे जाना धन्यवाद जाना और ये एक यूनिक एक एक्सपिरियन्स हल ए बचर फाउंडेशन डे सेलिब्रेशन अनाउंसमेंट रहा स्टूडेंट टू टोटी अगस्ट एक फटोग्राफी कम्पिटिशन एक्सिविशन कर इंट्रा कलेज भार्चुअल फटोग्राफी एक्सिविशन लेंस सेशन एट शुरू हो टोटी फिफ्थ टू टोटी अगस्ट हम कलेज फेसबुक पेज एवं स्टूडेंट फेसबुक पेज आज तरंग से देखा जाए शेष कर Thank mm-hmm. you. 